Welcome to Boater Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about, hey, what is that on my boat? If you're a newer boat owner or maybe even shopping, you may see some things on a boat that you're just not sure what it is, why it's there, what it does, and we're going to talk about those things in all different style of boats, bow riders, center consoles, pontoons, tritunes, all of it. So the first thing that you may notice on some boats, a steering wheel with this little knob or this little cap that uh, you flip open a little plastic thing, or maybe it's even exposed. And what the heck is that? Well, if you have a hydraulic steering or a power steering, uh, you may have a little fill here. This is for the hydraulic fluid. Um, on the straight hydraulic steering, um, it's going to be the place where you check and you fill. If you have the true power steering, you may actually have another spot, um, and you may or may not have that on your boat. If you have just straight cable steering, then you will not have this little, this little uh, spot to put that power steering fluid in. Next, along your engine, uh, in different places, you may find these little silver nipple looking things, um, and they are called Zerk fittings. Every one of those is designed to be greased on a periodic schedule, maybe once a year, maybe even more often, depending on exactly where it's located and if you're in a saltwater or a freshwater environment. And we talk about that in the boater boot camp. Now, this is an interesting one that you see on a lot of fiberglass boats and people just can't figure out what it is. It's the horn. Now, sometimes these horns are placed in a way where they get wet a lot and the horns will go bad. So if that's uh, it, where it's getting splashed up a lot, plan on having to to uh, fix your horn quite a bit and get a whistle on your boat. Next, the trim cylinder fluid, which is going to be on a stern drive boat. This is the fluid that allows the, the lower unit to raise up and down and to go into trim position. So this is a, a fluid that should not leak, uh, but it could over time. And uh, so if you see that fluid getting low, that uh, you may have a, a leak on your hands and you'll probably see a little sheen in the water when the boat is in the water and you run that trim up and down. Now, this is one of many uh, anodes on a boat. It's a, a sacrificial metal that is designed to be eaten away if there's corrosion happening on your boat. So some of them, this is on an outboard. Uh, some of them on our stern drive may be uh, in different places. They'll be on trim tabs. It, but look for this kind of plain, dull-looking metal that's bolted on, and they're, they're made to be uh, swapped out every so often when they get to be about 50% of their original size and weight uh, or weight uh, is when you want to replace them. Now, if you are a trailer boater or you're a dry stack, you probably don't need to worry much about it. But if you leave your boat in the water, this is a very, very, very important maintenance thing that you want to take care of. Now, this is a battery switch. Most people know what it is, but a lot of people get confused as to how to use it properly. Here's the best way to use it. When you start your engine up, start it on all if you're nervous that you may not have enough power, but run it on one or two. And what you want to do is just alternate depending on um, run it on one one day, two the next, one next day, two the next, three, or, and just back and forth and back and forth. Because what happens is the charge is going to go to the easiest destination, and the way electricity works is that's going to be the battery that's fullest. So if you leave it on all all the time, your one battery is going to continue to get weaker and weaker and weaker, um, and it's not good for it. So go back and forth, and if you're ever in a situation where, oh man, we've been at the sandbar all day, and I just don't know if we've got enough power, Put it on all so you get the cranking power from both batteries bundled together and you'll get yourself a better likelihood that uh, that you'll start up and not have an issue. Now, this is something you'll find on stern drives or inboards, and it's a little port. You may find that red is kind of worn off. This is a brand new boat, and you can already see it's starting to wear a little bit. So over time, you don't have that red fire port. That's exactly what it is. If you have a fire on your boat in the engine compartment, you don't want to open it up and feed it a bunch of oxygen. You just want to put your fire extinguisher in there and spray um, and extinguish that fire without giving it additional oxygen. Man, what is it? Well, it's actually a vent for your fuel system. It's why ethanol is so bad in boats is because the fuel systems are open to the environment. Uh, and this is another part of the fuel system. This is a little bit different looking, but this is actually the overflow. So if you overflow your boat, with the fuel, you can actually have the fuel spray out of this little part. You can see it's kind of facing upward so you don't get water rushing into it. That's what those two are. They're part of the, the open fuel system or the vented fuel system. And uh, that's why you never want to overfill your boat to, I say, about 90 to 95% full so that if you fill up on a cooler time and it warms up, that fuel is going to expand and it's going to shoot out of this, uh, this little nozzle. 
Now, you may see these little wires on your engine. You could have it on a stern drive. This is on an outboard. What this is, is it's a ground wire. It's to keep the ground, the system grounded so that you don't have any uh, electrical corrosion or electrolysis. Um, so if you see one of those wires that's kind of hanging, sometimes they can get frayed over time or a, a bolt comes loose or it comes, comes undone or doesn't get hooked back up after some service. You want to make sure that you get that addressed because it could cause premature corrosion and damage to your, um, to some of the, the components of your engine. So you always want to make sure that those are intact. Now, this looks like it could be an oil filter, but it's actually the fuel water separator or fuel filter. You're seeing these on boats these days because of the proliferation of ethanol and um, the, that because of the open fuel system that we talk about can suck in moisture. I've got a whole video on it uh, where we talk about the why ethanol is not very good for boats. And these fuel water separators are a key component to keeping your engine running good, making sure that water isn't getting into the, the fuel system. And they also need to be changed on a periodic uh, periodic uh, basis. Every 50 hours um, or every year, they should be changed. So if yours is starting to get rusty and, and uh, it's been a while since you changed it, you might want to track it down. Not all boats have it, but most newer boats do. And it's just a matter of finding out where it is in that fuel system line. We talk about a lot of this stuff in detail and so much more. Uh, in the Boater Boot Camp. It's totally free. You can go grab it at BoaterBootCamp.com. Now, you may see these little through-haul fittings. This one on a stern drive boat is actually the bilge pump, where, not the pump, but where the bilge is going to shoot out. This is where the water is going to shoot out. You turn your bilge on, and you look over the uh, the side of the boat on the starboard side, on the right side, and you can see if water's coming out. You may have one of these up where there's a sink, uh, where you have kind of a... a um, a water source that can just drain right out into the body of water that you're in. Now, this little pump right here is actually for your freshwater system. This is going to pressurize your system for your spray nozzles, for your sinks, for your sink in your head compartment or in your in your galley or your cabin. And then you also have this little thing down here. It's it's clear and it's got a little kind of a silver mesh cage in it, and that's the filter because you can easily get growth in your water system if you don't use it consistently. And so if you ever find that your your water system isn't priming, you might want to check that little cup, make sure water's getting in there, make sure it hasn't got clogged up with a bunch of gunk and, and uh, algae and growth and things like that if you don't use your, your water system very often. And it's real easy to clean out, and um, that's where you can get it reprimed as well if there's kind of an air pocket that's not getting through. Now, this is a scupper. This is on the back. Mainly, you'll find these on center consoles and dual consoles, but it's a scupper where water is designed to flow through the boat in some manner and then out the back, and it's got a check valve so that water can't flow back into it. If you find that your little check valve, it's, on this one, it's just a little rubber plastic piece. Uh, if you find that that's not there and it's broken off, you might want to get that replaced because now you're allowing water to come back up into the boat, which is never a good thing. You may find these on a, a boat with an anchor locker up in the bow, and this is just a drain. The, it's designed to drain out, but it's got that little finishing piece on it so water doesn't gush up in there if it were just a regular through-haul fitting like the, the one you saw in the bilge punt picture. And then you have this little piece on your lower unit. This is actually the water intake. This is where the impeller sucks in the water from this source. And you can see this is the front of the lower unit right here. That water is going to flow through there. It's going to suck it in to cool the engine, and it's going to be sucked up by that impeller. If you found this valuable, give it a thumbs up. Check out that Boater Boot Camp. If, the, if you learned a lot from this video, you'll learn even more from that Boater Boot Camp. If there's something on your boat that you're curious what the heck it is, leave it in the comments, and, and maybe I can do a second round of this video or answer your question. Life truly is better on a boat.